Go look out the window, Simon. This is the Blue Ridge Parkway. And it's not exactly on our way out, but we're taking it anyway because it's really pretty. But it's scurry. It's kind of scurry, yeah. Basically on the edge of a cliff. Mountains all around us. And it's getting a bit better now. Oh well, no, it's still pretty mountainy over there. smoke oh yeah you can see it a little bit there's Jeez. smoke coming off of our brakes because we're coming down off the mountain and it's so so high up yeah it's not good It's never happened before, eh? That's some hot brakes, man. I don't know what to do. I've never, uh, I'm like in first gear, no overdrive, and it's like the transmission can't slow it down enough. These hills are so steep I could barely walk up them. This is where we have to go. Seem to be cooling down a little bit. Alright, I think that does it. It's where we came from, and that's where we gotta go. So, if this, if this camera had smell o vision, what would it smell like? Uh, burning brakes, man. I, I don't know what else I could smell. I've like. never smelled that before. It smells like really plastic. disgusting. It's and we also had an air freshener going in here. So it was like this mix of this nasty air freshener with the burning brakes. Ah, it's so pleasant. <laughs> well, we had to come down the mountain either way. It would have been the same back there as it is here. For now. Almost. Give it basically three times Bye, two. National Forest. So we're coming through the town of Vesuvius, which is kind of ironic because we're having mountain problems. And uh, when we climbed Mount Vesuvius in Italy, we had a few of our own little problems trying to get up that damn hill. Uh, <laughs> but they have a lot of Italian names in this area. I don't know. There was like Montebello, Vesuvius. It's like uh, America's own little Cinco Terra or something like that. Anyway, 
It's beautiful here though, drop just gorgeous. If you are in Virginia and you're going uh, this north or south, um, it's definitely worth a detour. The Blue Ridge Parkway, fantastic. So why were you putting water on the brakes? Well the, well, the water on the brakes is to cool it down. I mean like, I was kind of concerned that you, you shouldn't really put water on the brakes because the contaminant that's in the water, any like salt or, or anything else, will stick to the brake rotors when it evaporates. But there was like mm, fresh mountain spring water, so that we were happened to be parked right next to. So I don't think there was a. And we, I don't think we could have possibly gotten any cleaner water. So um, yeah, the brakes work fine, and they're nice and cold now. And we got down the mountain one piece. That's all that counts. <laughs> We made it to Washington DC. Actually as a kid I used to live here uh, for about a year when I was really young and I don't really remember all that much about DC. We're not here for a super long time. We're gonna try and see a lot of museums and uh, art galleries tomorrow. Tonight we just did some uh, research at the uh, local Starbucks. Let's be real. Uh, so we didn't do a whole lot tonight because honestly I was in a bit of a bad mood and I think that's something that <coughs> We should t I guess that we should talk about because we're making these these videos and I feel like we want to make them interesting and we want them to be fun to watch but some days we just feel like shit and we don't want to do anything and we want to like sit in our pajamas and watch TV and eat chocolate just like anybody else and so I, I find it kind of hard sometimes because I want to do interesting fun things so we can make videos about it but then days like today I'm just really grumpy so I think it's a I think it's important to remember that even when you're traveling and you're living in a van there's still days that feel crappy just like any other lifestyle I'm, I'm never grumpy I'm just a very level-headed individual just cool like a cucumber that's me I'm gonna oh <laughs> Sorry, does that hurt? I didn't mean to hurt you. I didn't mean to give you a love tap. I didn't mean to hurt you. You're so mean. You're so mean. Okay, we're gonna make dinner. Um, I am gonna reuse some of the rice from yesterday, fry up some stuff. Also, Asian food. Simon forgot to mention. You forgot to mention that not only did you live in D.C., but your sister was born in Maryland. Yeah, my you sister's know? American. She's American. So shout out to Sam, the American. So for she's, being American. She's the her only suggestion to us is go to uh, Big Ben or what's it called Ben's Chili Bowl. Yeah, we asked her for suggestions of what to do in Washington, so she and she just said, "Go get chili, Obama ate there." Chili dog, <laughs> go get a chili dog, America. America. Thanks, Sam. So yeah, shout out to Sam. Okay, so we're in a Walmart parking lot. It was really tough to find this parking spot because all the other WalMarts in DC are a no overnight par parking. They're on the list. If you look online. Um, there's this big long list of the 20% of Walmarts that don't allow overnight parking. Most of them actually have signs too on top of that. This one has signs, no overnight parking. Hopefully it won't get kicked out. There's a few other um, camper vans here and there's a lot of uh, transports that are here for the night. So I think we'll be good. And it was the only one that had any of that. So we're hoping we don't get kicked out. But uh, a little hard on the uh, Walmart parking. We've been doing that a lot lately and I apologize for not doing so much street camping because I know that that was like the rebellious me wanted to do a lot more of that. But the truth is, is like, if you can have all your lights on and you can watch a TV show and you can be up like as late as you want and not really care about any of that, um, it's really nice to uh, be able to stretch out, cook, leave dirty dishes, have everything stretched all over the place and not have to pack everything up and be ready to move at any, any time because uh, if you do boondock somewhere um, like street side or something, that's something you have to deal with. You have to pack everything up before you go to bed because you might get woken up in the middle of the night and told to move and try telling a police officer, hey, I have to do dishes before, uh, before I can move. They're not going to be down with it. And then, People are just walking by or like looking into your 
Yeah, so and then, you know, like, whatever, just like the on onlookers from the sidewalks and stuff like that. It's always a bit weird, but honestly, though, I think, I think that we're in like the retirement phase of our trip now because it's coming closer to an end. So we're just like, we don't want to deal with that shit anymore. We're not like we were in our young days. <laughs> Getting old, eh? No, but it's really cool to know that you have the option. Yeah. To to street camp, I think we just. We've been doing a lot of actual camping, and now we realize how luxurious it is. And so, yeah, I think it's, there's a balance, but it is definitely nice if you can. Yeah. So tonight for dinner, we are making a chicken fried rice dealio. I'm going to figure that out as we go, using mostly leftovers and that huge amount of chicken we have. All right. So this is what I'm titling the White Guy's Guide to Fried Rice. Um, I, disclaimer, my grandma didn't teach me how to make fried rice, okay? I've just learned what I've learned from, like, YouTube and other cooks and stuff like that, so everyone's got their own way of doing it. Basically, the key to fried rice is dried out older rice. If you get it nice and dry and you get that oil nice and hot, throw it in nice and crispy. Now, one, one of the best parts about fried rice is it's a really good leftover kind of meal. Um, I'm tossing in a few veggies. I got the onions already chopped up. I'm doing some baby corn. It's good stuff. It's been sitting in our cupboard for ages. Got a little bit of garlic here from my garlic paste. And we got the rice from yesterday, which is kind of like um, one of those rice instant packages. It's sort of kind of rice. I don't exactly know what it is. So the key to good fried rice is this sound you hear right here. That's the sound of rice that's dry enough that it's actually crackling and getting uh, crispy. If it doesn't make that sound, it's because it's too wet usually, or the heat's not high enough, or there's not enough oil involved, or something like that. And you want to let it brown up on the bottom, but not blacken, and then dig it up off the bottom and swirl it around. Just kind of like crispy stuff on top, put some fresh stuff down there. If it gets stuck, you can use something like white wine, or even I've seen people people use housing sauce you know, or fish sauce or whatever and they just dump it in and it loosens up the stuff on the bottom. So that's pro tip for you. Another key part oh, of the recipe. You never know how much dog food you're going to come up with because you can't see it down oh, here. Try again. You gotta go fishing. It's like you don't want too much. You don't want too little. Okay, oh. another key part of the uh, recipe is to make sure you gotta feed the dog too, yeah. so that when and water him, so and water him, big. so that he can grow big and grow more champs. Uh oh, he drank all the water already. That's a lot of water.